Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. This is the program where we review the main themes of the adult Sabbath school lesson of the week. This quarter we are studying the book of Hebrews, and in this episode we are looking at lesson number 10, which is titled, Jesus Opens the Way Through the Veil. Before we get into today's study, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus and for what he has done for us and for what he's doing for us right now. As we continue to look at another aspect of his great work, help us, Lord, to draw real strength and comfort and encouragement from that in our lives and that we may be able to share this with those around us is my prayer for all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. The date was 24th of June, 1981. The place was Medjugorje, a small village in the Balkan country now called Bosnia and Herzegovina. It was here that supposedly the Mary, the mother of Jesus, appeared to four young people. What this led to was an influx of pilgrims who travelled to this village and to this now holy site. Holy places have drawn religious people for centuries. Places like Bethlehem, Jerusalem, the sites where Jesus was crucified and buried. Millions of Christian pilgrims have travelled to these locations so they could be in a holy place. All this shows that people want to experience being in a divine presence. To start the discussion in your group, ask these questions. Have any of you had the opportunity to travel to the Holy Lands and visit the sites where Jesus walked? Or this one, what is it about sacred sites that attracts people? Our lesson this week looks at how the book of Hebrews stresses that at his ascension, Jesus went into the very presence of God. Notice these verses. After he, Jesus, had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. That's right in Hebrews chapter 1. And then this one. But when this priest, Jesus, had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And this one. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. The Bible is very clear that at his ascension, Jesus went directly into the presence of God. Why was this important to the first readers of Hebrews? It was important to them because the way that they approached God was through the sanctuary service. Do you remember why God asked them to build the sanctuary? God said in Exodus 25 verse 8, Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. The sanctuary, you may recall, had three sections or apartments. There was the courtyard where the common people came to bring their offerings. Then there was the sanctuary proper with two rooms, a holy place where priests served and the most holy place where God's presence would appear. And only the high priest entered here once a year. The service of the Old Testament sanctuary shows that access to God was limited. Common people could only come into the courtyard. Just the priests could enter the holy place. Only one person, the high priest, could enter the most holy place, and even then, only once a year. But with Jesus, a new way has been opened for all to the presence of God. We see this in the language used in John chapter 1, verse 14, where it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word dwell there can be translated as tabernacled. 
God pitched his tent amongst us humans. The whole point of Hebrews is that through Jesus, we now have direct access to the presence of God. Notice these words. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. By the blood of Christ, his perfect sacrifice, which was our topic last week, Christians can enter the real sanctuary in heaven and enter the presence of God. This is described in this passage as the new and living way. This is in contrast to the old way of the old covenant, which, as it says, was weak and useless, obsolete and aging. In the Old Testament, the people had to bring animal sacrifices, and then they relied on the priests to enter the sanctuary on their behalf. But Jesus is our perfect sacrifice and our great high priest. He is both. Here's a question to discuss in your class. Do you think that we take it for granted nowadays that we don't have to bring animal sacrifices or go to a temple in order to come into God's presence? Hebrews speaks of the new and living way as being through the veil or curtain. This is terminology of the sanctuary. But which veil is it referring to? Bible scholars have debated whether it means the veil to the courtyard or to the holy place or the veil that separated the holy place from the most holy place. The point is that these veils were both entrances and boundaries that only some people could cross. What's more, the veil in the sanctuary made it possible for the people to approach God. They couldn't look into the most holy place, for instance, and stay alive. But, and here's the good news of Hebrews, Jesus has opened up a new way through the veil, which it says is his flesh or his body. There is no veil in the heavenly sanctuary. Jesus doesn't need a veil to separate him from his father. Jesus makes our approach into God's presence possible. Through Jesus, we have direct access to the throne of God. Friends, this is incredibly good news. What does this mean for us? It means three things. First, through Jesus, we are already in the presence of God. That's why it says in Hebrews 6, 19 and 20, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. This is confirmed in other places of Scripture. Take, for example, Ephesians 2, 6, where it says, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. The second significance of this is that we can approach God with confidence and boldness. As it says in Hebrews 4.16, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Or as it puts it in the New King James Version, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. And then in Hebrews 10, 19, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. The third lesson that we can learn is that we can have full assurance. In Hebrews 10, 22, it tells us, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. We can have full assurance, full confidence 
in who Jesus is, what he has done, where he is, and what he will do for us. As we seek to apply this wonderful message, ask these questions in your group. How does the fact that we can have full confidence help us in today's world which has little to no confidence in God, the Bible, or Christianity? How does this message speak to those Christians who are getting weary in their faith? And what impact should the fact that through Jesus we are already in God's presence have on how we live and how we worship in church? Thank you for watching The Big Picture. If you would like to get in contact with us or would like to have The Big Picture sent directly to your phone or email, simply send a message using the contact details on the screen. May the Lord richly bless you as you study His Word. Thank you.